Listen, I know how bad it sucks. You spend forever putting together this amazing prompt that gets you the detailed image, the perfect background, the lighting, the camera, the clothing, only to realize that the subject has like 64 teeth, 19 fingers, and their eyes look blurred out with a color blue. When I first started creating AI images, I just thought this was kind of part of the deal. I would sit there and regenerate images over and over and over again till I finally got one that looked right. But then I learned about inpainting and I discovered how you could fix these little mistakes in just seconds. This works for any AI images, whether you created them in mid journey or you created them with stable diffusion. And the deeper I got into inpainting, the more I realized how powerful this technique is. You can literally create images that would be nearly impossible with just a prompt. As you watch today, I'm gonna to be using a system called Run Diffusion. I absolutely love it. It allows me to access stable diffusion using a laptop, a desktop, even a tablet. It doesn't matter what GPU I have on the system because the GPU is run entirely through the cloud. If you wanna learn more about this, I've got a video that I'm gonna link either up here or up here somewhere, it'll be in one of these corners, as well as it'll be in the description down below. I also have a code, David Tatera 15 which will get you 15% off any Rinda Fusion purchase. But for now, let's jump right in and I'm gonna show you InPaint. Now, I'm not gonna create my own prompt. Instead, I'm gonna go over here to Prompt Hero and pull one of their existing prompts to use. And I like this one, it produces a beautiful looking image, it appears. So I'm gonna take both the positive and negative sides of that prompt and put them into stable diffusion. And when I generate it, the four images come out like this. Now you can see this, this is a beautiful looking image, but there's something weird going on in those eyes. They're, the white and the blue seem to be blurring together. Uh, it's oversaturated, it looks very unnatural. The rest of the picture looks great, but the eyes are a mess. So I'm gonna click over here on send to inpaint, and that's gonna allow me to go in here and inpaint. Now when I get in here, I've got a little bit of a brush tool and I can adjust the size of that brush depending on how detailed I wanna get it. Once I get the right size, I need to go in and cover the portion that I want to change. Now by masking it, by covering it with this little black area, I'm specifically telling Stable Diffusion, this is the area that I want you to focus on changing. Then I need to make a few settings down at the bottom. There's an option here called Masked Content. Usually I use original, which means it's gonna basically take pixels from the original image and use those to regenerate it. Every once in a while, I will use latent nothing if I'm trying to make a bigger change, and I'll show you that here in just a moment. Then I need to set up the number of sampling steps. Usually I go ahead and bump this up, uh, somewhere more around 50 or 60, because I'm only really sampling for such small areas that I give it a little more time to do the detail. I click the little checkbox here which says restore faces. Now that does a great job whenever you're dealing with specifics like a nose or lips or eyes. It adds in a specific element to that model that helps clean up any of the little mistakes. And I wanna increase my batch size. I usually do four on this as well because that works well with the GPU and it gives me a few different options to quickly look at and see which one looks best. Finally, I drop the denoising strength down to 0.5 which basically just tells it not to break apart the image quite as much because I'm really just trying to do little fine-tuned adjustments. And then I hit generate. And as you can see, this set of eyes is way better than the originals. They're clear, they're not overblown. I've got them in a few different shades, a little bit of different shapes for different eyes. Some of them have longer lashes, some of them have a little more dark makeup around them, but all of them are much, much, much better than that original set of weird blue blurred out eyes. Now, as I said, simply fixing facial features is one angle that you can do with stable diffusion, but another one you can do is to actually change the image. So in this case, what I wanna do is I'm gonna take that image that I liked, but I wanna monkey with the hair a little bit. So I'm gonna highlight over one half of the hair on her head, and I'm gonna remove any references to the long blonde hair from the prompt, and put in a reference to dark hair with purple highlights. And it kinda worked. As you can see, it added in a little hint of some purple highlights to that hair that I had inpainted over on that side, added a little bit of darkness to it, but it really didn't do a major change. I was looking for something more significant. So this time I'm gonna bump up the strength indicator in the prompt to a full two for that dark hair purple highlights command. And I'm gonna change the mo mode over to that latent nothing. And the results are definitely stronger. I got more color on there, I even got some green in there. I'm not sure where that came from, but it was working on that other side. So this is kind of one of those unique things that you can do with inpainting that's really hard to do in a prompt. You can inpaint and you can specifically tell it to change a section of it. 
Next, I'm gonna try this prompt here. This is for a little Star Wars kind of female character. And as you can see, I got a great image, but something's wrong with her left arm. Part of it is cut off into the wall. So I'm gonna in-paint that in. I also don't really like that Stormtrooper helmet, so I'm gonna to try to remove that from it. I'm gonna go back and set it to the original. Make sure that my strength is up there at the nice 50 or 60. I got my batch size. I got my denoise strength set up right. I don't need to click on the restore faces because I'm not actually working on a face this time, but I'll generate. And there you go. Not all four versions are perfect, but they definitely did improve the arm on the right hand two of them there. I like that one a lot. That one looks really good overall, but the arm is still a little bit blurry and the shadow doesn't look quite right. So I'm gonna run it through another round of in-painting. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that area, just the edge there where it's not quite clean and I'll generate another round. And that looks much, much better. As you can see, the arm is now complete. It's a full image. It looks really, really good. But I do notice a little bit of funniness around the lips and the mouth. It's not quite as clean as I would really like for a real looking image. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna do a little bit of in paint there. This time I'm gonna select the restore faces because I am working on a face and I'll generate a few copies of that. And there you go. The top right hand one looks great to me. The arm looks complete. It looks clean. The shadow looks good on there. I don't really have any complaints at all with that image. Before we do this last one, I have a favor to ask of you. If you enjoy this type of content, do me a favor and click the subscribe button. Helps me know what kind of content people are really interested in and what I should make more of. If you're not ready for the full commitment of a subscription, at least click the like button to show me that. All right, lastly, I'm gonna jump over here and we're gonna do one more prompt with this Laura Croft kind of Tomb Raider steampunk version. And as you can see, it created a pretty good looking image, except it's got an extra arm in there. So I'm gonna try to in paint away that arm. Once again, I'm gonna bump up the sampling steps for the specific area. I'm gonna make sure to drop the denoising strength and generate the image. And it seems to have just recreated different versions of that same extra arm. It didn't actually understand that I wanted that removed from the picture. This oftentimes happens when you leave it on that original setting. So now I'm gonna move it over and do the latent nothing setting, which is supposed to bring in all new pixels instead of using the old pixels and reorganizing them. And as you can see, it's definitely bringing in new pixels. It's got kind of a smoky blurry background to it, but it's nothing like what the original robot arm was there. It's starting to remove it. So I'm gonna take the best one of these I think is there, and I'm gonna send it through another round of in painting. I'm gonna leave all the settings just how they are, and I'll generate it one more time. And that one looks much better. As you can see, it got pretty darn close. It's just a kind of a smoky looking background, but there's no arm there. I did however notice that there's some weirdness with the eyes and the lips on this last image. So I'm gonna go back and do one more round of in painting still. This time I'm gonna do the restore faces and I'm gonna get it to fix those little mistakes on the face. And there we go. In the end, I have a nice, clean looking image. I removed the arm. I've got a good looking eyes and face on it. Everything looks solid to me. And it's a whole lot easier than sitting there generating these images over and over and over again and hoping that Stable Diffusion is gonna figure out what was wrong and fix it or trying to re-engineer your prompt and adding a bunch more negatives and positives to it. It's much easier to just go in and in-paint it and fix the mistakes. All right, guys, well, I hope you appreciated this video. If you're interested in learning more about Run Diffusion and being able to run Stable Diffusion in the cloud on any computer, make sure you follow this video right here.